Hello and welcome everyone to this quick and short video on analyzing HR survey using Google Forms. So in this case study, we took a survey of 23 people. Each were asked five questions with five possible choice of answers. Strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree and strongly disagree. Now before I show you the data, let me remind you that this case study will be using the feature of Power Query. So if you're using 2010 or 13 version of Excel, you may have to go to Google and download Power Query. Once you've got that, you'll find a tab on the top right. For those with higher version, you will get the Power Query under Data tab and I'll show you during this exercise. Right now, I go to the input data. Now when I look at the data, I realize there are around 23 people from different regions, they are different positions, they serve different teams and that is a duration. So these values are specific to people. Now, they have been asked multiple questions and the questions are there in the blue cells on the top and the responses are given easily underneath. Now this is the kind of output you get when you use Google form to do a survey, correct? Now let me tell you that if you were to make a pivot table right now, you would be facing a lot of issues. Let's say the first issue is you'll find every question listed out. Despite your best effort of making a tick mark against all of them, you will not get the answer that you're looking for. So let us define the problem and then we can go for the solution. While I delete this sheet, why don't you recollect the cases where you had faced the similar issue? The issue is that of your data being in a cross tab versus flat file format. If you notice carefully, the top one is like a 90 degree table wherein on the left hand side you have a name of people and then you have the question on the top, correct? Pivot table hates this kind of a data. You need to convert your data from cross tab to flat file format. And let's study the format here. Jackson Stella is appearing twice because she was asked two questions and this is her response. So. Each line item is a complete transactional data on its own. The name, the question, the answer. So this is what I mean by flat file. So unless we convert your cross tab data to flat file, we will not get the answer. In fact, I must show you one more example to help you illustrate the difference. If you look at this two dimensional table, this is a cross tab table. On the left hand side, you see all the division names. On the top of the header, you see all the grades. Now this has to be converted into a flat file for you to be able to successfully apply and use pivot table. So you realize this department HFD is appearing three times in my flat file. The reason is because each department is represented by three grades, E1, E2 and E3. So I hope the difference between cross tab and flat file is clear to you. If yes, then I can quickly show you through two examples, how do you convert the first data into the second one? What will not work is transpose. So if you simply copy and do a paste special and do a transpose, this is not going to help you. So let us see how to proceed. First, I choose the table. Then I go to data. I click on from table range. And once I do that, it asks me a very simple question and I click on OK. Next, I choose second, third and fourth column by keeping control pressed. Now I would want that these headers which are currently on the horizontal top should be appearing vertically thus making the list longer. To do so, I have kept all the three columns chosen. I will go to transform. And then from transform, I look for a button which is called unpivot column. Okay. Now you can also activate by right clicking and saying unpivot column. Make sure all the three columns are chosen before you do that. Done. There you go. You got the answer. You got HFD appearing three times along with grade E1, 2 and 3. So let me just do discard and close so that I can come to the real data on which we want to work. So I chose the entire table. And before doing that, let me help you recollect that this is also a cross tab data. On the left, you have all these information and on the top right, you have all the questions. So that's what cross tab is. So after choosing the data, I go to data and I pull the data from Excel to Power Query. 
Now I choose the first question. I press control, and I keep on choosing other questions. But that's slow. So what do I do? I choose the first question column. I press shift, and then keeping shift key press, I press the right arrow key and continuously do that. This way, I've been able to choose all the question-based column. Now either I'll right click there and click on unpivot column, or I will go to transform and say unpivot column. Once I did that, I get each person's name appearing more than once to be precise six times because there were six question asked to every single person now you could have also done it in another way let me undo my last step this time i choose all those columns which i do not want to unpivot having chosen this i right click and i get unpivot other columns columns other than this same answer once done i go to file and close and load to Let's load this into the table. I may change the heading of the column saying question and the last column's heading to be answer. Now I'm going to apply pivot table. Hey, insert pivot table. Okay. I will right click on the pivot table, go to pivot table options, click on display and activate classic. So this quick option will ensure that all these fields can be dragged and dropped in the grid of pivot table. So let me keep going on to the next level now i put question in the row field different answer options in the column fields now when i look at the options i realize that the agree should be the second option strongly agree should be the first option so i right click on strongly agree and i say hey why don't you move to the beginning similarly disagree i right click and i say hey why don't you move one level down so this way i have strongly agree agree neutral disagree and strongly disagree now i bring answers in the main action area which is the value fields and i get to see that 23 people how have they responded against various questions now at times there are certain blanks and you would want to fill this with zero if you try to type a zero you will not get the answer that you desire so what do you do you right click you go to pivot table options and there's an option called for empty cells shows zero and i do that Next, I would want that a percentage calculation shows the percentage of people saying strongly agree, agree, neutral. So basically, I would want 8 divided by 23 underneath neutral. To do so, I right click on the number and I say, hey, why don't you show me values as percentage of row total? And once having done so, I choose to go to home and apply the format which allows me to see only the percentage without the decimals. Now, this is not over yet. Let me close all the unnecessary panels, choose the values of the answers without choosing the grand totals, and then go to home tab and then apply conditional formatting color scales. So you can pause the video, you can rewind the video and watch this again. This allows you to see, hey, where are people not so happy and disagreeing quite a lot? So one of them is about the pay, the other is about quality goals by the organization. If you want to add a slicer, you can right click and say show field list and then right click on the region and add as a slicer. Right click on position, add as a slicer. Right click on the domain, add as a slicer. Once you did that, I would want them to be organized in different positions and I also want them to be colored differently. So the second one, let me give a different color from the size slicer tools. And once this is done, I may go to view tab and disable the grid lines. If you want to make the slicer compact, you may have to go to slicer once again and increase the columns. Notice how easily I was able to make this compact. Similarly, I increase the column for the first slicer. I expand this horizontally and this way I have the slicer in a much more compact form. How about that? Why don't you try the same for positions where you go to the slicer tools and then increase the columns. So once I increase the column, I may have to adjust the width a bit. And this way I have a proper dashboard. As soon as I click on Asia, I see the response from only people from the Asia team. How about tech media and telecom TMT in short. So notice how easily you can modify the slicer and get more precise results. This was about using Google Forms data 
transforming the data step and then applying pivot table do share your feedback whether this is a problem you have faced in the past and whether this video helped you solve this problem